When it comes to network diagrams, we essentially have two different types of diagrams that we want to use, the logical and the physical. The logical network is more about showing how things are connected than where they are, where the physical network is more about uh, where things are in relation to one another as opposed to how they're connected. So a physical diagram, and we looked at this when we looked at planning a network, you have a physical blueprint, and so we might actually have all of the devices on this physical blueprint and that kind of gives us a good idea of how things are related physically. If you're trying to track down where a computer is or where a switch is, uh, where a cable is run, that's where physical diagrams come in handy. Logical diagrams, on the other hand, are useful for determining how things are logically connected. So let's look at kind of what these look like. I'm going to draw out a logical diagram here and then we'll look at a blueprint for a physical diagram. So with the logical diagram, uh, this is essentially showing how every device in the network is connected. So I like to start uh, with the internet because that's usually a single point uh, on our network and kind of everything fans out from there. And today's networking, that's really the service that we're trying to provide through that network is connection to the internet. So uh, let's just consider uh, here is my internet. Okay, So that's my connection. Now Whatever the internet is, it's coming into my house, my business, whatever it is, it's going to have some form of a line there, uh, some form of a cable or fiber or ethernet connection into a device. Now this stuff I don't necessarily care about because it's not within my responsibility. I just need to know that that's where the internet's coming from. But then we're going to start to connect devices. So let's just do a simple home network for this logical diagram. So the first device that we're going to run into is a modem. Now since this is a home network, uh, uh, this modem is probably doing a variety of different uh, things, not just translating from one medium to another as a modem would. Probably also has a built-in router, built-in switch, etc. So we're going to say that this is one of the super modems uh, that are being uh, distributed right now by internet service providers for home users. So not only is it a modem, uh, it also is a router and a switch. So it's got four ports and it's a wireless access point. Okay. So in this logical diagram, we're showing that things are connected. So this modem has a connection to the internet. We've got some wireless here. Now let's go ahead and connect it, connect it to some other things. So in this house, let's say that we've got a laptop, a desktop, and a smartphone. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll just draw a diagram here. So here is a desktop. Here is my laptop and here is my smartphone. And we'll just label those D, L, and S. Now, in a good logical diagram, we would have better names for those, uh, whether the computers actually have names or if they just have a designation, maybe an office number, uh, if you're trying to indicate which office a device is in, something along those lines. Okay. Now, from the modem to each of the devices that has a wired connections, we're going to draw a wired connection. So the desktop, of course, is going to have a wired line. So we'll go from my modem to my desktop. The laptop also has a wired connection. Smartphone doesn't have a wired connection for obvious reasons. They don't have Ethernet ports. But what they do have is a wireless connection. And so what we might also indicate on this is a wireless line. Now, I want to use different lines in my logical map to show how things might be be uh, connected differently. So my laptop might also have a wireless connection and my smartphone might also have a wireless connection. Okay. Now, because I've got a solid line and a dashed line here, well, I just wrote those down. So to me, it's intuitive that this is a wired connection, this is a wireless connection. But realize on this logical map, we really need to have a legend that kind of tells us what is what. And also realize in larger networks, while we might have wired connections, we might have 100 megabit wired connections, gigabit wired connections, 10 gigabit wired connections, 40 gigabit wired connections, so on and so forth. We're going to use different lines, different types types of lines, either colors or thicknesses, in order to indicate that larger bandwidth or at least indicate what the bandwidth is. Since I only have these two lines and this is a home network, these are probably gigabit ethernet, I'm going to go ahead and just jot that down. So I'm just going to write a line, say this is gigabit ethernet, and then these dashed lines I might indicate is 802.11 
uh, we'll say AC. So some form of wireless connection between the modem and those devices. Now again, wireless can have different bandwidths uh, and that can vary based on distance. So you may want to indicate, you know, if, if a certain wireless access point is only offering uh, wireless N or uh, wireless G, goodness, if it's old, uh, we might indicate that again with different colors of lines or frequency of the dashes or somehow differentiate between a high speed wireless connection and a slower speed wireless connection. Okay. All right, so now we've kind of shown how things are logically connected, but the next thing that we need is how things are logically addressed. Okay, and so that's where we get into IP addresses. Now, on the internet side, this modem probably has some form of a public address. I'll just use one of my common ones here. 62, something like that. On the inside, the modem is also going to have an internal IP address. Now remember, this is not just a modem, it's a modem, router, switch, wireless access point, hub, uh, super modem. Um, so inside this modem, we've got a internal network. So let's just say that this is a home network, so 192. 168.1.1. I didn't leave myself quite enough room there, but we want to include slash notation on all of these different IP addresses if we know it. Now, on a home network, um, oftentimes these public IP addresses are actually going to be on a slash 30 network, which essentially has room for two devices, one IP address for the modem and one IP address for the router that sits out in the internet. Um, so it might be a slash 30, it might be a slash 27. If we're on a corporate network, it's probably something uh, larger than a slash 30, um, smaller number, but larger network. Uh, so we may not actually know what that is, uh, but we can kind of guess there. But the internal network, we do need to indicate what kind of uh, network it is. What is the uh, slash notation? So we'll give my desktop here a 192.168.1.2 slash 24, which would be common. Okay. Now my laptop and my smartphone should also be getting uh, IP addresses, but notice my laptop might have two different IP addresses, one handed out by the wired connection, one handed out by the wireless connection. So my laptop, I'm just going to write it down here for the sake of space, might have 192.168.1.3 24 and 192.168.1.4 24. Okay. My smartphone's probably just going to have one. 8.1.5 slash 24. Okay. Now, it's interesting to note that in the real world, this isn't really how it's going to work. As far as I'm not going to always have this IP address with this desktop or these IP addresses with this laptop, uh, these are going to most likely be assigned by DHCP from my modem router combo as opposed to being statically assigned. So rather than indicating uh, each of these devices with a specific IP address, we may want to indicate a DHCP range. For example, if another device comes in, you know, we've got another device here, we don't know what it is, it hooks up to our wireless network, what IP address is it going to get? Well, we don't want to have to edit our logical diagram every time we have friends over for dinner and they hook up their smartphones to our Wi-Fi. So we need a way of kind of indicating, well, what is the address they're actually going to get? Okay. And so I like to indicate that uh, by using the just DHCP and some range. So I'll do DHCP 192.168.1. Uh, most modem routers are going to come with a default 100 to 200 slash 24. Okay. So I can then indicate this on the map, and I might even say that this is the wireless DHCP and then maybe over here I can indicate what the wired DHCP range is. Maybe it's the same for both. Okay? But I need to know where is that address coming from and who does it actually apply to. Now in a home network that DHCP uh, addressing is going to go to every single device that's connected to it because we've only got one device here. But consider a corporate network where we might have stacks and stacks of switches and each of those switches might actually have different VLANs. We could have uh, routers between different networks within the single building. So we might have five or six different networks, uh, different network IDs, different slash notation, uh, and each of those different networks is going to have a different DHCP server handing out IP addresses to those devices. So this is just a kind of a typical example of a logical network. A couple of things that I want to point out. So usually my uh, network devices are inside of rectangles and my endpoints or what I call my uh, nodes, the things that I'm actually connecting to the network are going to be circles. 
Okay. So just a convention there. If you use a product like Microsoft Visio, uh, Visio actually has really cool little pictograms or icons that you can use for each of these different devices. They're a little bit more descriptive than rectangle and uh, circle or ellipse. That's just a good way to differentiate. This is something multiple devices are connecting to. This is an endpoint device that's using that service. And again, making sure that we're using proper lines for bandwidth and whatnot. Okay, so let's talk about the physical network for just a moment. So let's say that we've got this network set up. Well, how does that actually translate into a physical network map? So I've got a blueprint of a home over here, and here's my home network logical diagram. Uh, essentially, if I wanted to make a physical diagram of where all this stuff is, I just have to figure out, well, where is it on this map? Okay. I've got a desktop, a laptop, and a smartphone. Now, where do those actually live? Now, depending on who lives in this house, whether there's kids there, or maybe this is just a single guy living in a three-bedroom house, and he's got this whole thing to himself. So maybe bedroom two here is actually an office, and inside that office is a desktop. Well, I'm going to go ahead and indicate here is that desktop. Okay. So I'm going to put it somewhere inside that room. That's where that desktop lives. Well, where's the laptop? Well, the laptop is kind of interesting because it looks like it has a wired connection as well as a wireless. The wired connection might uh, lock it down to a single point, but that wireless connection might indicate that it actually moves around quite a bit. So we have a couple of options here. We could either put the laptop in a single point or just leave it as a floating device, maybe put it over here on the kitchen counter or something like that where it's going to be using Wi-Fi. Uh, it doesn't really matter as far as where we put it as long as we know that it's on the map and that we can allow it to connect to both this wired and this wireless. So for the sake of treating it as a wireless device, I'm going to go ahead and just set it on the kitchen counter here. So here is my laptop and then I have a smartphone. Now a smartphone, it's going to be in my pocket all day or in the pocket of the person living in this house. So it's going to be going all over the place. Uh, but where does it live? Well, it charges in the kitchen. So we're going to say that it charges right here. There's my smartphone. Okay, so that's great. We've got our devices here. Now we need to figure out where is my modem okay, and how are these devices actually connected together? Well, if we look at this standard house, okay, uh, most internet service providers are going to go through essentially one exterior wall. They're not going to necessarily go to the middle of your house or uh, exactly where you want it, but they're going to try and go through one exterior wall. And since most internet service providers also provide services like cable TV or uh, dish TV, something like that, they're usually trying to put their equipment near the TV. So living room is probably where that's going to be. And based on this layout, I'm guessing TV is either against this wall or against this wall. Uh, possibly against that wall, but somewhere in this room is kind of where uh, the internet service provider is going to want to run their cable line or whatever it is. So looking at this being an exterior wall here, probably not a bad guess to think that the internet service provider is going to come in somewhere around here, which means that my modem is probably going to be in this corner. Okay. And we might indicate that it's a wireless uh, modem router super device sitting there. Okay. So now the question becomes, well, how does this desktop way over here actually get a wired connection from this modem that's sitting over here? The wireless devices kind of make sense. All right, we can kind of see how the wireless from this device here would reach most of this home, especially if it's a more modern wireless access point, probably covers this entire area fairly well. But what about the wired connection? Now, depending on if this house is on a slab or has a basement beneath it, very rarely our house is gonna have drop ceilings throughout the main living space. We might have to get creative, especially because this is gonna be a really high traffic area right here. We've got a very big hallway, kitchen and living room, front doors right here. So so this is going to be a very high traffic area. It's not like we can just run a cable across the floor. So we're going to have to indicate in some way, shape, or form, how does this desktop get a wired connection from the modem? Let's take the easy way and just say, oh, this house has a crawl space or a basement, something underneath it that we can run a wire. And so we go ahead and we just run our wire. And then we might have to add a note of some sort through basement, you know, add, add a note that essentially says, you know, it's not just running through the living room there. We pop down into the basement, we go around, we're going into the desktop. But that at least shows us now uh, where that line is.
So if all of a sudden we have physical network problems with our desktop, you know, we can kind of think, well, where is that line? There it is. Now again, home scenario, this is fairly straightforward, fairly simple, not terribly difficult. If we go back to our corporate network, it becomes a lot more difficult to kind of see where everything is going. We have a lot more lines here. Remember, we've got wireless access points everywhere. We've got desktops all over the place. Okay. Now this was our planning document. We kind of started to plan our wire runs, plan where we were putting wireless access points, etc. On this diagram, to convert it to a physical network diagram, we actually need to start labeling all of these different computers. Okay, So uh, we might do it by office number or we might do it by a person's name or some other convention to figure out uh, which computer is which. Might just simply number them for now or letter them so that we uh, know which one is which. Okay? Uh, oftentimes the ports will actually have a uh, naming convention as well so that you know which computer is plugged into which port on the wall. But starting here, you know, we're going to have a computer. So we'll call this computer A, uh, this computer B, then we've got computer C and computer D, okay, so on and so forth, okay. So notice that I am I am going to indicate each and every one of these devices, and I'm probably even going to name my wireless devices on this. So rather than just a W, I might have uh, W and then some descriptive piece like uh, Northwest or something like that. So this is W Northwest. Uh, this is W North. This is W Northeast. This one might be W Conference Room. These wireless access points are actually network devices, so I should put them in rectangles. There's a device. Let's say that there's a specific wireless device that I know about. Let's say I have a laptop right here. Well, now I can go ahead and connect that to my wireless device, uh, the closest wireless device typically, and I've got my other lines for my wired connections. So just to give you a quick quick summary of what we've talked about so far, we've got logical networks, we've got physical networks. Logical networks are going to show the relationship to one another. Physical is going to show where they are. Now notice uh, the desktop, the laptop, the smartphone, doesn't matter if they're in the same room or different rooms, they're all indicated kind of equally on the logical diagram, but the physical diagram actually shows where they are. Now, in the real world, when do we use these? How do we use these? Well, in our planning, we're actually going to do both. We're going to go ahead and put together a physical network plan first because it helps us with the uh, conceptualizing where everything is, uh, where we're going to put stuff, how we're going to run wire, uh, or just where things are. So if we need to service them, we can find them. Okay. So in, in a sense, we're going to start with the physical network diagram for planning purposes and then uh, for troubleshooting purposes as well. The logical diagram then becomes incredibly important if we want to connect new devices or understand how does this network actually work? How are these switches actually connected together? Uh, the more complicated the network Network, the more networking equipment you have, the more critical this logical network becomes in kind of understanding how are things actually connected. Finding all the devices is step one, especially if we're walking into a network that somebody else put together and we're trying to figure out uh, where things are. We're going to put together a physical diagram. Where are all of the things that we're connected to? And then we're going to put together a logical diagram of how are those things connected. Uh, so where and how. Kind of a good summary there. The last step would be to create a complete network diagram, which would be essentially overlaying the entire logical diagram and all the information onto a physical diagram. So we might actually have IP addresses written in here, uh, labeling uh, all the different network switches and devices, and maybe even marking how long is this wire. We definitely want dimensions on there, things like that, to kind of finish out this diagram. Uh, now that complete network diagram can become incredibly tedious to read, especially if it's something, you know, a single sheet of paper and you're trying to cram all that information for a small business onto a single sheet of paper. So those often do better in a digital format. You can use PowerPoint or Visio would be the right tool to use to kind of create a blueprint, put everything on there. And that way you can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, you can have layers of information that you can turn on and off. Uh, that's the better way to do a complete network map. Uh, but for, for the sake of this discussion, we've got a logical map, we've got a physical map. Again, logical, showing how things are connected, physical, showing where things are connected.